Hey, kids, how about a little extra, extra magic hour? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Extra Magic Hour podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova and Park Hopper John. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. This is show number two for the week. This is where we get to do extra fun stuff just for you guys because you are our Patreons. Mm -hmm. And we do two shows a week for you guys, and that's awesome. So, uh, all right. So, we've done uh, we've done uh, two shows already. We've got three shows to go. Uh, <laughs> oh, the punishment I'm, we create for ourselves. I'm coming off of a 24-hour well, Let's hour create day. a new show, John, so we can do five shows. Let's do the Christmas Crane show. Yes! 173 <laughs> days till Christmas Crane, everybody. <laughs> Wait, hold we on. Can start, let's see how many. We can start calling... Uh, how many days till Christmas? Uh, she didn't hear me. Well, it's not Christmas because we have to come back because it has to go up in um, October. I like the thing that I sent you. Somebody... Uh, uh, Put the Christmas crane on the Lego. Oh my God, that's hilarious! <laughs> uh, so go, uh, it's at Christmas Crane, right on Twitter. On Twitter, yeah. Uh, somebody photoshopped the Lego uh, Cinderella castle and put the the crane, the Christmas crane in it. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. That was great. That's they should, a good idea. They should. I. You know what? I'm gonna go to the Lego store and I'm gonna tell them. Listen. You want to make yourself a lot of money? Package the crane with the Cinderella castle. Oh, speaking mm -hmm. of, and we're going to talk about Toy Story in this next uh, bit, but um, Lego has uh, some Toy Story stuff, from, uh, some Toy Story kits from Toy Story 4. But I here, saw that. But here's the stupid... All right. Stupid from my perspective. From a sales perspective, not so stupid. Mm -hmm. So in order to get all of the characters, like Buzz, Woody, you know, Bo Pe you have to buy all the individual sets because they only come with like two each. Oh, yeah. So if you want all of the toys, I just sell the toys in a thing. That's all I want. That's all I want. No, I don't no want that's the rest what you of it. want. Uh, yes. That's what you yes. want. Yes. They're not going to do that. That's yes. stupid. Yes. That's stupid. Yes. Just do that. No, it's yeah. stupid. I'm gonna They're go to the Lego store and I'm just gonna open up boxes and start pulling out characters. Dude, dude, <laughs> that's you know why they're doing that. You have. To I buy know exactly seat. why. Sell more sets. Right. Yeah. Right. That's and uh, speaking of uh, Toy Story, my uh, Toy Story sheets from Pottery Pottery Barn came. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> why have you not taken a picture of these yet? Are you sleeping Me? on them? Oh God, yes. Are they comfortable? <laughs> oh God, yes. Do you feel like Woody or do you feel more like Buzz? I feel like Bo Peep. <laughs> I feel like Sleepy Dog. It rub it rubs the lotion on its skin. It is uh, organic cotton. <laughs> of course it is. Oh, yeah, of course, right? Organic cotton. This way they can talk hey, uh, more. It's got the word hey, organic kids. in it. Uh hey kids. All cotton is organic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It yeah. grows from the ground. It's yeah. organic. Yeah. That's right. That's, right. That's funny. It's organic. So, <laughs> all right. So today we're talking about uh, how technology created a richer play set mm. in Toy Story 4. Yeah. Do you think this movie – you know, I'm hearing uh, uh, Tim Allen said it and Tom Hanks said it, that this looked very much different than oh, yeah. previous versions of Toy Story, that they and upped – the game of the video. Uh, yeah, I think there is a lot more to the photorealism. Uh, it looked different. It was darker. Mm. Uh, the scenes inside of the spoiler alert, the scenes inside of the, uh, the shop, mm. the, uh, consignment shop antique store. Yeah. The antique store were really amazing. Mm. It's dark. Uh, but you know some of the stuff they did with uh, Duke Kaboom and the commercial and the yeah. the uh, 
the memory st- stuff that he had, and it was great. I mean, it was totally great. And then being in a being in a fair and seeing how the lights played off on everything, it was yeah. just it was really great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it did look different. Yeah. It felt different too. Right. Yeah, it, it's you know for me, I don't know if it happens to everybody, but I'd say three to five minutes into uh, a Pixar film, I have suspended my disbelief that these are toys or this is bugs or this is you know what I'm saying they quickly seem to be able to bring you suck you right into the the you know the world of yeah. what they're trying to do whether it's a car or <laughs> incredibles or whatever it the, seems to happen faster than that than it does like a marvel movie uh the two movies that did it for me was I think just the trailer or the first race scene in mm-hmm. Cars mm-hmm. where it literally looked like they had taken uh, a NASCAR race yeah. and traced over it. Yeah. But the one that really blew my mind was Brave. Mm. Uh, yeah. Just to see the water and the hills and everything. Right. It looked so real. Yeah. Uh, that's when I was like, this is better than real. Yeah. You know? It was uh, that dinosaur movie, too, with that little boy and the dinosaur. What mm-hmm. was it? The Good Dinosaur? Mm-hmm. I can't even think of the name of it. That's it. The background, the scenery in that movie could have been a National Geographic film and nobody would have known The Wiser. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. I mean, I was just like, what? Yeah, Pixar continues to up the game. Mm. And and see, here's the thing. Pixar has to mm. because when you're when you're talking about those Marvel movies or you're talking about so many other movies now, the Jurassic Parks of the world, they're CGI, yeah. which is graphics, right. is photo real. Yeah. So if 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 we could do that with, mm. you know, Marvel and and dinosaurs, I mean, yeah. certainly there's got to be a, there's got to be a level of upmanship going on with Pixar because, you know, they're the ones that really started it all with their Pixar man or render man, you yeah. know. So. Yeah, yeah. Presto is, I think, the software they use to create the characters and right. the scenery. And then render man is the thing that turns it into uh, a movie. And Ed Catmull, I don't think he's there anymore, unfortunately, um, was the technology genius guy that, you know, helped uh, bring this to life. You know, Lasseter was a creative side. Ed was the technical side, and then Jobs came in and really, you know, put right. the icing on the cake uh, for Toy Story. Right. Um, and uh, I have, oh, it's downstairs now. I have the original uh, VHS of Toy Story. Yeah. I should go back and I should watch that VHS and, like, compare it to, like, Toy Story 3. And it probably doesn't even look the same anymore. No. The one that really gets me is Tin Toy. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Tin Toy looks awful compared yeah. to yeah. Uh, nowadays. Yeah. Uh, the first Toy Story, I think, is is funny because all the backgrounds really seem flat. Mm. It right. really feels like a flat cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's the way it kind of feels when you're watching um, a hand drawn Disney animated film. You know, th- the background is very flat and one dimensional. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it doesn't really seem to come to life, right? Um, and there's just characters drawn in the front uh, forefront of that, you know. Right, right. So that's why Disney created the multi-plane camera, John. That's correct. I saw that myself at the Walt Disney Presents at Disney's Hollywood Studios. <laughs> this sponsored by One Man that's, Stream. That's right. Sponsored by One Man's Dream. Which is not a dream anymore. <laughs> no. It's more like a nightmare for him. All right. Let's get into this. Uh, Want me to start this off? This. Yeah, go for it. So this article I thought was a, a little bit interesting because it kind of gave an insight into Pixar and Toy Story a little bit. And uh, me being the crazy guy that I am, I like to know how things are done, made, created. You know, so this kind of helped... Uh, you know, for me, with my little Toy Story. And I kept seeing, not seeing, not yet seeing, 
seeing a lot of interviews. I mean, there's so many, so much interviews out there of Tom Hanks now and Tony Hale and, and you know, giving you insight into the movie now. I was like, well, you know, this popped up. I was like, oh, well, let's go with this. Oh, I should right. ha- Oh, if we have time, I have some video that we can play that would really be exciting. Okay. Yes. Like the first interview John Lasseter <laughs> did for Toy Story. Wow. Or when he accepted the first Toy Story Oscar. You want to do that next week? Yeah, we could do it next week. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so the Pixar team uh, traveled to infinity and beyond to build sets as dynamic as the characters who inhabit them in the all-new animated adventures of Toy Story 4 in theaters now. For starters, the aspect ratio used for the previous films was 1 to 85 to 1. And that changed to 2 to 39 to 1 uh, for Toy Story 4, creating a larger depth of field. It's a wider screen format that gives us uh, a different look for the film. So maybe that's the look that we were thinking of. Mm -hmm. Uh, We wanted to give the audience a more cinematic experience. Director of Photography Patrick Lynn explains, having little toys in this format makes them feel even more lost, which fits the story. Hmm. Uh, these sets are characters in their own rights. Sets Shading Lin, Shading Lead, Ling Tu, says they interact with the main characters to help draw the story forward. If you take away the detail, you will feel a little bit of something is lost. Yeah, and that's that's for reals because I I was I like to watch the. Uh, the CGI scenes mm. uh, as they're you know for different things as they're deconstructed, right? And uh, there was a, a a short film that came out several years ago called Kung Fury. Have you ever seen it? No. It's no. the dumbest movie you'll ever see. Oh great! Uh, but it was really cool. It's like a it's like a mix. It's an homage to like eighties and nineties. Okay. Uh, buddy cop sci fi, all sorts of stuff, but. But they, it broke down how they did certain scenes with the CGI and the the layers, mm. the lighting layers, the shadow layers, the, right. the all the things. It was just amazing. And they would show it with the layers peeling away slowly so you could see the difference. Mm. And then you see the final film and you're like, wow, that, that, that makes a huge difference. So I totally yeah. understand what they're talking about here. If... If the shadows didn't w- work right, yeah. then our brains would would fall out of the the story. Right, right. And you know, I've seen like you know making of Toy Story and Toy Story One, Two, Three, and it's weird that they first go from storyboard and pencil drawings to then clay things that they make. Then mm-hmm. they 3D scan that just to get it into the computer, and then they draw on top of the uh, uh, the CAD drawings of these. I'm like. That just get a live person, crazy. In, you know. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of process and steps to get to a final product. Right. You know. Absolutely. Uh, you want me to check up? Sure. Pick up. All right. Toy Story Four opens with a steadfast Bo Peep, voiced by Annie Potts, uh, leading a rescue mission in the midst of a rainstorm. One of their own has been left out in the rain, and the toys are determined to save the day. It's a feat of animation, particularly for those who had worked on Toy Story from 1995 and didn't have the tools to create a similar effect for a scene involving Woody and Buzz Lightyear. Uh, We can't do rain interacting with characters or rain interacting with a set, Global Technology Supervisor Bill Reeves said. Uh, We had to make some design choices. What could we do within the context of the tools we had? Uh, The team devised an elegant solution. Uh, production designer Bob Polly says, by painting rain clouds in the sky and making the street appear wet, uh, it sold the effect. While the rain didn't touch anything, Polly notes, there was a beautiful beautiful effect on the window. Hmm. Now, what a difference 24 years makes. Toy Story 4's prologue required a downpour to stage the drama for a Toy Story rescue and Bo's eventual departure. The team dedicated considerable resources to developing the technology behind the realistic rainfall that appears now on screen. It's critical to show the lengths the toys go to, uh, Polly emphasizes. 
Now, here's the, the thing that I've come to find with uh, uh, each Pixar movie. Each Pixar movie presents a new technology challenge for mm -hmm. the team. Uh, you know, Brave, it was her, her hair. Uh, you know, Nemo, it was water. Every movie presents some kind of technology problem that they have to go spend half of their resources. All right, you 30 billion people go figure this out and then come back and tell us when you can make rings. Right. You know, right. or make hair or make. For Sully's fur was yeah, the big yeah. deal. For Sully's in fur, her, the hair, the, the water, uh, uh, Bugs Life was, you know, everything, grass and all that kind of stuff. The multitude of bugs was the big deal yeah. for, for yeah, Bugs the, Life. The too. whole crowd thing. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, every, every movie presents a new uh, challenge for them. Um, so it's very interesting that they torture themselves. <laughs> You know, and I guess we all should be glad that they say, well, you know what? Hair is too difficult. Let's just do something else. You know what I'm saying? Let's just make it solid. Let's just yeah. make it a solid yeah. piece. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll just make it look like, you know, when he runs, it looks like he's moving around or whatever. Yeah. But they don't. They go, all right, well, let's figure out how to make 14 million strands of hair on Sully. You know. Right. Or whatever right. that number was. Right. All right, so later in the film, Woody uh, finds himself in an antique mall. I wouldn't call it a mall. Uh, which happens to be the elaborate set in Pixar history. Oh, most elaborate set in Pixar history, if I could say correctly. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, to a toy, an antique mall feels like a city. So we built an uh, antique, uh, antique mall that was 8,000 square feet with more than 10,000 items for sale. Wow. Now, see, once again... <laughs> Rather than just creating two or three, they went to 10,000, uh, <clears throat> says uh, set supervisor Thomas Jordan. All of the items are arranged to buy theme. I bet we can find the Pizza Planet truck hidden amongst them. Probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. There are rugs which indicate which uh, customers will be uh, walking around so the toys know how to avoid being seen. And lots of places for them to hide because a single prop can take hours, uh, two weeks to create. Fans might spot Easter eggs. See, that's where I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like the throne from Brave. Oh, wow. Didn't see that. Mm. A scream canister from Monsters, Inc. <laughs> and the Eiffel Tower from Ratatouille. Sprinkled throughout the mall. So now you got to go back and watch Right. Uh, in addition to visiting nearby stores, the set's technical director, Rosie Cole, relied on memories of her family's antique mall to ensure the props felt genuine, meaning the objects had effects like chips, rusts, and scratch. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite things when they're when they're scooching around uh, is the behind the, the behind the walls. Yeah. The cobwebs, right. how dusty it was. Yeah, 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 and the it's wires amazing. and all the other stuff that you find back there. Yeah, it literally looks like every place like that I've ever been to is just like one spark away from being an inferno. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> so, to bring some of the highly, uh, some reality to the highly stylized Toy Story world, Polly says they added more complexity, more richness to give you a sense of place and atmosphere. To achieve that, Reeves explained, we added dust particles to the air. Wow. Yeah, notice that. Mm -hmm. That's one of those things that you yeah. don't, when you don't see it, right? it, it feels weird. But then yeah. when you see it, it's like, oh, yeah, that's real. Yeah. Uh, dust particles added uh, visually pleasing bokeh effects, and that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, dust, in fact, is one of the elements the team is most proud to feature in Toy Story 4. Mm -hmm. This was a detail that was initially saved for specific scenes, um, but it was successful in enriching every environment that they added, uh, uh, putting it all over the entire antique store. Wow. 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 So now they can do, like, pollen, they can do dust, they can do all right. of those kind of things now. Yeah. I'd like to get a little glimpse at their computer form. <laughs> I'm sure it's ridiculous. I'm sure it's the size of a small city. <laughs> oh, look. Wait, can I look up? Oh, look at that. <laughs> uh -oh. Be a lot of fun. 
Uh, because toys are the driving force of the story, the audience is literally seeing things unfold from their perspective. In this case, two inches from the floor. We use these details to draw you into the character's point of view. Uh, since the sets don't talk, uh, they don't have the opportunity to tell you the story. So we use visual language to give them their own voice of their own. Mm. Uh, the team starts off with a clean slate. Then we throw a layer of dust on all the objects themselves and add some more dust bunnies and miscellaneous debris, hair, and fur. Uh, adding that software can add, add or diminish the amount of dust in a given area with a few simple clicks. Uh, yeah, and hours and yeah, hours of yeah, your time. Yeah, says set supervisor Stephen Karski. Uh, it's something you might not notice unless it was missing. Mm. So yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I I don't think I noticed it the first time I saw it, but I did notice it the second time I saw it. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you. So here, okay, this is more information than you really care to hear. Uh, but we have dogs, mm -hmm. and if you ever sweep or or clean underneath your bed or underneath mm. a a couch and stuff, you just notice dust bunnies, and dog mm. fur, yeah. uh, especially when you're cleaning it. So you notice it. Mm. Uh, so it's funny when they were running underneath the, you know, the curio cabinets and all that oh, stuff. Yeah. I'm like, it looked real to me because mm. I, I had been cleaning that earlier in the day. Right. I'm like, yeah, it looks just like underneath our bed. You know, there's some <laughs> dust bunnies in there. Cleaned all that out. There's some yeah. fur, hair, and stuff. Yeah. And, and if it's not there, I mean, your, bra your brain might trick yourself into letting go and, and mm. enjoying the story. Right. But because it's there, mm. that's like what you said earlier. Your brain falls into the reality of yeah. the experience much faster yeah i wish they would release like a uh behind the scenes where uh you know they'll show you i don't know 15 20 minutes one layer at a time right you know just the background just the dust just the you know the yeah. the, the props now the props with chips the props with you know because i'm sure that's the way they're doing it and maybe not but right. I'm, I'm sure it's all layered in there and then rendered out so absolutely yeah uh, Toy Story 4 also features cobwebs. Mm. A lot of cobwebs. Mm -hmm. uh, Jordan uh, describes how one animator wrote a program simulating an AI spider building cobwebs. Oh, nice. Uh, he guided the spiders to where he wanted them to build cobwebs, and they do the job. Right. Uh, and when you see those cobwebs overlaid on the rest of the scene, it gives the audience a sense that this place has been here for a while. Without that program, animators would have had to make the webs one strand at a time, which would have taken several months. So you have to tell the spider where the connection points of the cobweb should go, but then it does the rest for you. That's crazy. Hey, honey, what did you do at work today? I built an AI computer that makes uh, spider webs. Oh. I like built fun. an AI spider. Oh, that's that's <laughs> awesome. We we uh, we are living in the matrix, my yeah. friends. Oh, uh, that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. That's great. Uh, so while these uh, details may be subtle, they make for a world of difference in creating a sense of believability, and that's what sucks me in. Uh, that being said, Paulie notes that all of these skills and tools are at the service of the story. If we don't uh, have a great story to tell, all the tools in the world is not going to help. And you can buy the software, Presto and RenderMan. I don't right. know what it costs. Uh, I don't think it would work on your Mac or Windows. I think you would have to go out and get some horsepower to run these things. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure it takes up like a quadrillion teraflops to, uh, you know draw one thing you know but uh yeah go to pixar.com and uh they do have some interesting behind the scenes things uh oh what was it the oh the con uh, i gotta mention the con academy i don't know if they still have it it was a pixar course that was free that the pixar animators uh all the ones you know and love would tell you and teach you how they did certain characters or certain scenes or certain things uh and 
it is not as easy as you think. It's not a lot of drawing. It's a lot of math, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very interesting to, to do that. It's uh, Khan Academy. Uh, go Google that and see if that's still out there. Cause that's is that, is that K A H N? Uh, K yeah, K A H N Khan Academy. Yeah. My God! God! I want to get me Khan! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that was a lot of fun. That uh, uh, that, that Pixar thing. always always like raises the bar. Mm -hmm. Uh, not to get into a deep discussion about this, but you know, I I think the Toy Story four is great. It's not my mm -hmm. favorite Toy Story. Yeah. Uh, I do feel the loss of 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 Lassiter. I really do. Yes. I think that this story was great, yeah. uh, and it held my attention for a long time. But yeah. I really think that that the loss of of Lassiter over time is mm -hmm. going to be felt at Disney. Yeah. And the reason that I say that is is there's a movie that came out recently that I think has taken the the baton from Pixar. Mm -hmm. And and taken everything that Pixar does well, mm -hmm. and and upped it, and that was How to Train Your Dragon three. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Have you seen anything about that movie? I haven't seen no, no. There's. I think so the Secret Life of Pets looks pretty good too from the stuff yeah. trailers I've seen. <laughs> yeah, but it's a certain style of animation. Mm. I think that uh, How to Train Your Dragon three is the closest to like what Pixar turns mm. out. There are so many scenes of flight and water and oh, wow. and light coming through clouds. Hmm. <laughs> it's fascinating, and the stories uh, are incredible. And hmm. I think that I think that there's something missing. I, I I didn't think that the story was horrible in Toy Story Four, but it, you you could tell there's just a piece of something missing. Yeah. yeah. So I hope that that I hope that that doesn't continue forward. But that being said, I'm really looking forward to what uh, to what uh, Lasseter turns out over at the other studio. Yeah, Skydance. Hmm. Yeah, it'll Some be interesting to see um, the two other ones. What is it, Soul and Onward, that are uh, coming out? You yeah, know, that are probably probably pretty much not Lasseter. Yeah, you know. Well, he probably had some hand in it because. You know, it takes about four years for Pixar film to uh, evolve. So he's only been gone I, one. <laughs> I want to know, how did they come up with the idea of doing Inside Out, which takes place in the emotions and the mind, mm. and now we're doing Soul? Mm. I, I just think that that's, that's too close of a... That's a question know. for John Negroni. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who threads all this stuff together. And he, and when he says stuff, you're like, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> you're like, oh, all right. No, no, no. I'm not talking about how they're connected. Mm. No, I'm not talking about how they're connected. Uh, I'm talking about, okay, so we have this great idea, mm -hmm. and we're going to do a movie that takes place inside of a little girl's mind. Mm. Love it. It's a great idea. Mm. Soul. Now we're going to talk about the soul of a person and mm. all that stuff. I'm like, well... Well, what are we going to do next? Body Wars, the musical? You know, Could be. Why not? <laughs> you know, just one of those questions. I yeah. I wonder why Pixar is doing mm. the things that they're doing. I, yeah. I have some concerns. I have, con I have concerns. Mm. I don't know if the uh, Inside Out would have flown nowadays with the hashtag Me Too movement. Uh, why are you picking on a girl? What do you think? Girls' minds are all crazy inside. I don't know. I think they did a pretty good job with you it. You don't know I don't if they are, John? I, I, no comment. Um, I, I can only speak for the girls that I've known in my life. Right. right. So, anything else you want to add? No, you knew. All right. right. If you haven't seen Toy Story 4, go see it. It's you know, Don't listen to all the stuff on the internet. Uh, just go see it and make your own judgment. And then come back and you can come judge with us then. <laughs> Tony thinks it's the greatest Toy Story movie ever. No. Oh, okay. No. That's. I th listen. If if it was up to me, you had Toy Story three. It ended in a perfect manner. We knew what happened to the toys. We knew what happened to Andy. You could have left all well enough alone. But no. Right. Nope. Yeah. Now you had to go do this. <coughs> now I got to figure out what what's next. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think that I love the idea of the shorts. Mm -hmm. the holiday specials mm. that's that's the best way to use all of that yeah 
Yeah. You know. So anyway, let us know what you guys think. Let us know what you guys think about Pixar, the direction mm-hmm. they're going, Toy Story 4. Uh, leave us a comment, or you can shoot us an email at DisneyParksPodcast at gmail.com. Yep. Uh, and otherwise, if we don't see you online, we will see you in the parks. The Extra Magic Hour podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company.